Do you know, it's great being an engraving ninja in these difficult times. We can walk around in public under total secrecy because everybody looks like this. If you're new to engraving, I'm going to give you a quick fire introduction to the basic concepts and show you how easy it is. So let's start with tip one. These are typical engraving cutters and they're conical shaped or V shaped and as I turn them you'll see that each one here has a different sized tip. Now the concept is exactly the same as pen and paper so if we're producing large letters we'll use a big fat pen. But as we reduce the size of the lettering that we want we will reduce the size of the pen tip. Now if we use a fat pen for small letters, in this example we'd lose the centre of the G and the A and the E, but similarly if we use a really fine pen it's going to look rubbish if the lettering is large. Now we can produce very large letters with engraving and then fill them in with a cutter. So actually choosing the right cutter at this point will make an enormous difference to the time it takes. So I use a simple sheet, even my tired eyes can, can, can work out the size of the tip of this cutter and in the description below we'll, we'll add a link to download one of these sheets. Tip 2. Now you can always spot an engraving ninja, they know how to do their kerning. Now this is an old men taking their teeth out and pulling funny faces. This is all about the spacing in between letters. Now if we look at this example here, I mean you, you could drive a bus between the A and the V here. So aesthetically it's not right. So what we're going to do, this is a VCarve desktop, we're just going to reduce the space between, increase the space here a little, just tighten it up here and there. And you know, it looks a lot, lot better. Tip 3. Engraving toolpaths really need to follow a vectored artwork. Now, it's not always possible to get a vectored image of what you want, but the world is full of bitmaps. Some of them great, some of them not so great. So, my son was born in Wales, so I'm sure that allows me to uh, use this image uh, as an example. So, this has been lifted off the web. I'm going to use VCarve Desktop to vectorize this image now. It's picked out 16 separate colours in here, it's way too many, but I can choose which ones I want to outline and that yellow gives me an indication where the tracing is going to be. So let's have a look at that, take the bitmap away, great. So let's save that, try it again because I want to engrave two different versions to see the difference. We can reduce the number of colours. Now if I drop that right down on here it becomes very simplistic, just trace around the red, do you know what? Take that uh, vector image out, remove some of these little bits as well. Um, there's a filter in here so you can reduce the noise. Just saves editing, you know, the, 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 the more you can do at this stage the better. That's better. Okay. Tip 4. Now I love the preview option in VCarve Desktop. It will select the cutter that we have chosen and show you exactly how it's going to engrave. So that's that first vectorized dragon that we did. Looks, looks great. Now let's have a look at that second one we did. Now this is going to take longer to do. There's a lot more toolpaths in there, but look how striking this result is. Now the great thing about this preview is you can set the type of material, whether it's color filled or not. And you can then send this to the client as, a, as, a, as an approval or put it on your website. Tip 5. Now they say Moses came down Mount Sinai with some pretty important pieces of engraving on stone. So it's been around a while. But look at the modern twist now. Look at Not on the High Street. Look at Etsy. You know when you look for engraving products on Etsy, you'll see over 400,000 hits for products. It's incredible. So one thing we can say for certain is the world is waiting for your next creation.